Hello, it's Alden. Here's how to make a 3D TV in Blender and then composite a screen in After Effects. I'm using this free stock footage image from Pexels. I did some Photoshopping to get rid of some extra details and straighten it out. Then I bring it into Blender using images as planes. I'm gonna like scale it to, I guess, about the size of a cube to start with. First, I'm gonna do the loop cuts of everything that is vertical and horizontal before I go in with a knife tool. Uh, because once you start splicing with a knife, um, the loop cuts stop working. So take this bit. Um, cut it out, extrude it in. Sometimes in these corners, being more detailed is better than being less, especially with a curve, because you're gonna definitely see those um, straight edges later. In here, I'm going to basically extrude all of these little details, not each one of these little notches, but basically everything around all of these kind of sections on the right side. That's gonna help with a lot of the shadows and making it feel three-dimensional when we add our own lighting into the scene. So take all this stuff, extrude it a little bit, and we're already getting somewhere. For the dial, I'm gonna add a cylinder, project from view and line it up to the dial that's there. Um, I'm also gonna take a cube for the, uh, the little lever portion as well. And I'm gonna make another cylinder for these knobs, add an array modifier, and then just inset the buttons just a little bit. And now let's go through with our knife tool on the outside uh, and just do some of the last extrusions that we need and then take the entire perimeter and we're just going to extrude that uh, all the way back. Uh, it's going to definitely extend our UV map there on the sides and the top, but if we don't see it, it won't matter. Um, so now I'm going to add a glass screen. I'm just going to have something be a little separate. I'm going to make a plane here, kind of give it a little bowing shape, uh, and then we're just going to go in, use a mix shader, add glass, uh, bring in any kind of texture you want for whatever the kind of smudging is on the screen and put that in here with a color ramp into the roughness. We can also add some more smudges by doing a mix shader um, as the factor. I'm gonna take in a video texture also and bring that in here as well. And here we go, we have a pretty good TV here in Blender. So here I'm gonna set up a scene um, where I'm actually gonna use this model uh, for a shot in my film, The Robosexual. So I'm gonna start with a plane, um, make a little tabletop for it. There's some white furniture that we used on set in another scene, so I'm going to uh, mimic that so it feels like it's all in the same place. I also made some other assets here for the tabletop. I made some little trophy, uh, kind of like bronze statuette things, um, a metal placard, with a family portrait, uh, and then this lamp, which I modeled off of a lamp that I got from a uh, flea market recently that I've been obsessed with. This wall here is a 3D extrusion using a photo of the room where we shot this scene. Um, so I have this 3D version, originally for a set extension, but I've been uh, reusing it so many times. It is so handy to have a 3D version of the set. And then now I'm just going to bring in a camera, and set up this shot, which starts, you know, full screen. We're gonna see this company advertisement and then pull out of a TV screen. It's gonna sort of morph um, into something that's composited in there. Definitely take the time to make sure your camera and your shot is all fixed before you get, um, before you dial in too much with lighting. That's the same with production. You wanna get your shot up before you light the scene. Uh, the same thing with a digital production where you wanna get your shot done and then light everything according to what's in frame. Uh, Cause it's gonna be really easy to set up a ton of lighting and then you have to move it all once you have a, a shot ready to go. I have an image texture here behind the camera that is um, the wide shot of the scene itself. So I'm gonna use that as a reflection, just set it to emission. Um, and then I'm also gonna go in here and make some adjustments. Uh, there's kind of a yellowish hue to this scene, so I'm going to do that for this background image. So this is looking okay in terms of blocking. First, I'm gonna render out a frame and just see what the color looks like when I compare it to the other shots from the scenes. Now we need the video that's gonna play on the TV. So I have this company ad that I made in After Effects and now I'm just going to make it look like it's in a TV screen. So first you're gonna take your photo or video layer and duplicate it three times. I like to call them red, green, and blue. Set them all to add. Add a shift channels effect and set the red to have just red and the other two full off and same with green and blue. And this is gonna bring us back to our regular image. 
And then if you take one of them and move it around, you can kind of create this aberration depending on how much you move. If you add an adjustment layer and put a mosaic effect and turn the horizontal and vertical to something like, I don't know, 500, um, you can just add some pixelation, which is nice, especially if your screen is like older um, or if you wanna, you know, that's to taste. And then finally, and add a solid, add a grid effect, change it to width slider, do something like five and border of two, make it black and turn the opacity down to like 20%. And that's gonna create um, a nice more a pattern. Then you can bring in any kind of glitch or static texture, duplicate it, pre-compose one because you want it to be the exact comp size, and then make a new adjustment layer with a displacement map effect, choose that pre-comp, um, and then, you know, adjust all the settings as you'd like. And then you can take the, uh, the duplicate of the video layer and set it to screen or overlay. And then what's nice is that when you see some digital noise over your footage, it's also causing some displacement as well. And then all of these is pretty much the, the basics of, of how to get your screen looking kind of cool. I rendered out the shot in Blender, but I wanted to make some adjustments to the actual commercial itself. But instead of re-rendering everything in Blender, I decided I was just gonna do some compositing in After Effects. So here's the technique to do that. And this will be the same whether you have a rendered shot of a 3D TV or if you're compositing footage into any kind of production footage. So now here is the background that I'm gonna use for the TV. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make a solid. Um, and this is gonna be your screen mat. So just take your pen tool or you can use Mocha if you want uh, and mask out where your screen is. This is a still shot, so it's pretty easy, but you're also gonna want to track this and animate this um, if your shot is moving. And I usually use Mocha to do that just because I like the um, X spline tool in there. So that is gonna be where your screen goes. So now take that um, footage that you just made and we are going to scale it roughly where it should be and set it to alpha mat on that mat, on that screen mat. If you add the optics compensation, you can create some curvature, which is nice for especially these old TVs. And then duplicate your footage. I add a slight blur to it and set it to screen, then duplicate it again and set the blur to something more like 20. Um, and then just turn down the opacity for some of those duplicate versions. Um, and that just creates a nice bright kind of glowing feeling uh, from the TV set. This is the video clip that's the wide shot. So this would be kind of the reverse of the TV screen. So make another screen mat, alpha mat this to, to that screen, put transform on there. You can uncheck uniform scale and flip it around by putting negative 100 on width. And then you can just kind of scale as you normally would. I'm also going to add Lumetri on here and just make the the highlights of this reflection a more yellow color to match the scene. Maybe bring the mids and shadows down. Um, and I'm also going to set it to soft light. You can also add a camera lens blur. Um, blur it just a, I don't know, 10 might be too much, maybe seven, I don't know, seven to five, whatever looks better for your shot. Um, just to soften it just a touch and then bring the opacity down until you like what you see. Next, we're gonna add some dust and smudging on the glass surface. So here I have some like smeary uh, texture. I think this came from Punisher, Clint. Um, so again, set it to that screen mat and we're gonna scale it and set it to screen. Bring the opacity down a bit. Uh, until it's something that you like. I like something that's maybe a little more subtle so it's not too distracting. And there you see that reflection and the kind of subtle smudge marks really make this feel like you're looking at a piece of glass. Um, I like to add grain to everything, especially if you're using still images just to create some noise. One thing I noticed, especially with this yellow color, is that when it's too saturated, it doesn't look right. So in Lumetri, you can go into curves select the yellow and then just bring the opacity of just that yellow down. And I found that a um, less saturated yellow looked better on all of the screens and signs and everything. And I think that that's probably 
true of a lot of bright colors. And especially if it's something that's like on an old TV, you know, you're not gonna get that vivid saturation. So there you go. That's how you can make anything look like it's in a TV screen. I found the process of duplicating layers, setting them to red, green, and blue, adding all of the effects really annoying and tedious, especially when you're doing a bunch of screens. So I actually figured out a way to use ChatGPT to create an After Effects script to do this in one click. So check out that tutorial on the next screen.